Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, May 20th, 2013. It is 7.15. First item on our agenda is the consent agenda. We have an approval and reversal of the uh, alcohol license for the Arlington Restaurant Group to return to Zocalo. Uh, request for a one-day beer and wine license for Arlington Center of the Arts for the retirement party of the Hardy School Principal. Request for one day beer and wine license at Town Hall for the centennial birthday celebration from Trist and Patsy Kramer. A request for one day beer and wine license and a road closing for the uh, St. Athanasius, uh, Athanas wow. oh, Saint the, Athanasius. Th thank you, St. Athanasius the Great for the Greek Festival and a reappointment to the Open Space Committee. Do I have a motion? And is there anyone here who's here to speak for any of these? Come on up. I apologize for my. Uh, That's quite all right. Um, Nicholas Rickett was from the Greek Orthodox Church at Four African Street, St. Athanasius, and we just submitted our paperwork uh, to Marie here. We wanted to thank all of you uh, for once again considering our alcohol uh, license for the three days for the festival, road closures, and such. And we hope to see you all there. This is Mahan. Uh, Any move approval for the consent agenda. And um, I just want to check with the gentleman and with Mrs. Kropelka in terms of police details, because um, I think what we've had in the past isn't quite enough. So we have, you yeah. all have agreed to an appropriate Absolutely. police so presence. I, I, can I follow up on your question? And so uh, I noticed that in the packet we had, we didn't yet have the police signature. We've got that now, or? Yeah, and there's a new follow up on about the police details. Okay, it's on a, that's one of the things on our desk. Okay. I didn't, I didn't get that. I, it, it's my. If you yeah. could ask what, what. Yeah, go. It's my understanding that we will instead of two have four, we'll yes. double it, and that is agreeable to. Everybody. So just so you know, too, last year we actually had the three plus the shift commander, but I don't think that was noted anywhere because I had met with Captain Flynn last year, so we just we completed the same plan as last year. Yeah. No, last year you had four, but they were two from St. Athanasia that you had, uh, I believe, contracted, and the other two, in the interest of what was going on up there, we sent up there. So, But it's all worked out this year, and okay. you all are fine. Any other questions or comment? For, for this, no. Okay. No, well, I think the only thing I'd like to note is, um, just to make sure it's clear with, with you, that on the consent agenda, we're only approving the um, <clears throat> beer and wine license and the street closures. Your letter had referenced the use of that, that field, which I think this has come up in the past as well, that is not under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen. So, Correct. We have yeah. the letter which is in the packet just for clarification from the principal. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Great. Thanks. Any further? Dis actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Mahoney, just a second. Oh, I'll, I'll second, yeah. but I'd like to note it's, something, it's too. I, I just think it's, it's worth noting, just because it's an, a rather unusual item on our uh, consent agenda, that the first item is uh, reconsider and reverse a previous approval of a um, transfer of a um, liquor license. This is somebody else that we're discussing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. For, and this is for um, Arlington Restaurant Group uh, doing business as uh, Zocalo, uh, Zocalo in East Arlington. I think we should just note that, that we had granted a transfer based on a, a sale that was pending of the restaurant. The sale did not go through. That is why we're um, seeking to, to reverse that. And I think we just want to make that clear. It's not a punitive measure by any means. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on any of these other events? Mr. Greeley. I just want to clear with uh, Juliana, the uh, request for the centennial uh, birthday celebration, this, it's actually the centennial celebration of Town Hall and Gardens. Uh, I'm the producer of, do I need to recuse myself from voting on that? I think putting that on the record is sufficient. Say again? I think putting that on the record is sufficient. Okay. Well, then would you put it's executive 
producer. Executive producer <laughs> with credits. All caps, hashtag. Yes, right <laughs> And no. No. And, <laughs> thank you. Anyone else who wanted to speak on any of these events? Anyone on the board? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Number one, done. Number two, licenses and permits. This is a public but, here. I'm sorry, really, Mr. Chairman. Just before we go there, I think we have a special guest from Canada in the audience. Do you think he should be introduced to the people of Arlington? I don't. Th I don't know if that would. If he needs to do that. <laughs> I, but I think we should note that we are not only in the USA being observed. We are now outside the border. Uh, someone. From it is Canada. an international audience today. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Right. Sorry. Next. <laughs> Will you do the rest of it in French, please, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> Je ne parle français, oh. Monsieur. Oh, that was good. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to do a public hearing. Request Hack the Taxi Business Operator License. Mohammed Shahajan of Medford. This is tabled from 422 and 513. Hi, good evening, everybody. Hello. Hello. My name is Muhammad Shah Jahan, and actually, I applied for license and permit. Mm, right now, I have uh, the livery, and I have a minivan. And so, and when I we saw you last, um, we were looking for a better description of what was going to be on the door, for like the what the description of your business was going to be. Yes. Airport car and van. Sorry? Airport car and van. And Airport so, car and, and van. van. Yes. And so you're just going to have those letters on the side, that's it? Yes. With a phone number? Six. Yeah, six. Okay. I, Mr. Kiro. I, I think that's a good question about the phone number because, not to jump to any conclusions, but I did see the vans outside, I think. Those are your vans that they said airport car and van. I didn't note a phone number on there. Are, 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 no we, phone number right there is now. no phone number. Yeah. To feel I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. He's the one at the microphone. If you want to speak and be recognized about the, uh, and I really do need him to speak. For, if he's the one applying for the license, I need him to speak for himself. I think. Thank you. If I find the permit and I do the number, the phone number. Can you put a phone number? Mrs. Mahan. You will be driving this taxi? That livery. Yes. So livery. when people get in your taxi, they'll be talking and speaking with you? Yes. Yes. Um, for how many years or years, one year or more years, have you done that? that three years. Three years? Three years. OK. Um, I understand English is probably your second language. Yes. And you're still learning. Yes. Um, besides driving the taxi, are you doing anything else to help learn English? Okay. Yes. Yes. My, my, what I'm the reason I'm asking you okay. is when we give when we tell people it's okay to drive taxis, yes. we want to make sure that. You're comfortable, you understand the passenger who gets in, what they're saying. Yes. Can you speak to that at all? Or, you know, how comfortable are you? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where to go. Yeah, so one of, the, I guess, I think that what Mrs. Mahan is getting at is, work, uh, is one of the requirements is of being able to drive a taxi in Arlington is being able to speak English. Yes. And we're concerned, I, I guess I'm listening, in our conversations with you, this is our second conversation, I'm, I'm concerned that you don't understand everything we're asking you. Do you think, am, am I, do you think that's a fair description or do you understand what we're asking or? Yeah, I understand, yeah. So how would you, how would you convince, how can you um, allay my concerns? How can you make me feel better about this? Actually, right now I work with uh, my friend, the shop owner. Yep. And he give me job, and I do. I'm sorry, could you speak up a little? No, I work right, uh, right now with my friend, the wood shop owner. Mm-hmm. And he give me job, and I pick up and drop, and. He gives you the job, and you pick up and you drop. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think, Mr. Carroll. I think one of the concerns that we've had in some of the discussions, I think this hearing and the last hearings, um, is the difference between the livery and the taxi. And I know in response to one of the questions this evening, I think Ms. Mahan asked about the taxi, and, and you said, well, it's a livery. Yeah. And um, the taxi service, so the livery, as you describe, where your friend gives you the jobs and they're set up ahead of time, perfectly understand that, but we don't give those licenses. The taxi, though, you would not necessarily get those jobs from your friend call calling to you. You may be going to the taxi stand yeah. or have residents in Arlington who would, you know, climb into your car and then ask you at that point to, to, ta to take them to a certain destination. So it, it, do you, yeah, you I, understand? Yeah, and so that, yeah. they, they would expect to be able to um, explain the destination and have it understood and get to their destination in the, the, the quickest way possible because there's a, the, the meter is running and yeah. you know they're concerned to the, with, with the, the cost so it's it's a it's a it's a customer service job too so I, I don't know how more to explain that yeah yeah Does, I, do, you, do you have a meter in your car currently but I, no I don't have no no Mr. Really? Uh, I'm looking at the liability insurance. I'm not sure that's as much as we require. Although, I don't know, is there some other insurance that we're not looking at? But, oh. Well, normally it's, it? oh. he has the million, but normally it's uh, 20, 40, 50. He has combined single limit. I don't know if town council can. Um, Speaking, well, generally, this combined single limit would refer to some kind of excess coverage or umbrella coverage. It's unusual not to see the coverage of the primary policy as being at least the 20 and 40 required under the regulations. So I'm not exactly sure what to make of this. I don't know if this is the only insurance or there's another one. Insurance. This is the only one. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not so sure what this means. Yeah. Under our rules. Okay. Um, for our rules. I would agree. So I don't think we're ready yet again. Okay. This will be the third time we have to table this one. Well, I, Mr. Bray, I, um, you know, I don't Plus think that expired. from the discussion that we've had today that even tabling it, you know, okay. would be worth it. I, um, no. I think, you know, I guess it'd be a move of no action on this, um, and I'll make that motion now. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion? So, actually, I should say, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue? Seeing no one. Is there anyone on the board who has another comment before we take a vote? Mrs. Mahan. If I could, I know you work with the other gentleman. Yeah. Um, if you two could talk. The, the first issue is the insurance, the deck, deck sheet, the liability insurance page. Um, part of the reason that we're saying no action, we have a minimum, which is 2040, and that's not on here. Perhaps if you both could talk about that, as well as um, you're not precluded. You're not, there's no reason why you can't come back again, fix the insurance as well as maybe um, speak with your associate about um, communication skills, speaking skills, because that's the other thing. So insurance and communicating. So right now, it's not a yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'll echo Mrs. Mahan's statement. I'm also I'm going to support Mr. Burns' motion. And it's for two reasons. One is because the insurance isn't satisfied, and I think that one is probably easy to satisfy. But one of the reasons that we do the licensing is w to check whether or not you can serve the public well, and I'm not yet convinced that you can. 
and I need to be under, be convinced of that before I can support your application. So uh, I, I, I really I want to bring more cabs into Arlington, and I look forward to supporting a future application, but at this time I'm not ready to, su to support it. Mr. Greeley? Right. And, and we're trying to provide taxi service to the town. So without a meter, you really can't be at a taxi stop. I mean, you can make up a price, I guess, along the way. But without a meter there, passengers in a taxi like to see what the cost of things are as well. So uh, I don't feel we should just give a license to a livery. All that's doing is taking away airport runs from other taxi services in the town. Any further discussion? No. All right. All those in favor of Mr. Burns' motion of no action was seconded by uh, Mr. Greeley. Okay, Sorry. fine. All those in favor say aye. 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 Five zero. Sorry. Thank you. Hopefully we'll get another try. All right. Next up, Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there's a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is there someone here? Mrs. Fiore. Uh, Elsie Fiore. Welcome. Uh, I'm here on the business of uh, the possibility of I'm putting Mr. Tullamere back on the Zoning Board of Appeals. If you uh, got your packet, I I'm, had, uh, sent a copy of the short letter to... We did receive that. Okay. Uh, I um, have known about it myself for a couple of years because I'm active with some of the people down in Cambridge where I live right on the line. And I often go to their meetings, the North Cambridge group has, and others, and I'm... In, uh, you know, so I've been horrified. I'm also, uh, when uh, everyone thinks that Kendall Square is a wonderful place, uh, I think it's terrible. It's, uh, the traffic is awful. It's, and I, my understanding, and I may be wrong, was that um, Mr. Tolmiri was um, in charge of the Kendall Square area. But it seems as if he's in charge of the whole uh, business. I just think that uh, anybody who owes eighty thousand, and some of the people in Cambridge say it's two hundred and eighty thousand dollars to the city when he's given himself raises, and when they uh, somebody stepped down and resigned, he put himself in the place without permission and without the other board members being there. So I'm just here to express my great concern that he may be put back on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. I think it would be damaging uh, to the reputation of our town, especially um, if the Board of Selectmen and others uh, consider that. So I have I have no intention of giving this to you unless somebody wanted it. These are articles that have been in the, the Cambridge Chronicle over the past few months. So, uh, and it tells the same story that was in The Advocate. Uh, a lot of people haven't seen the story in The Advocate, so a lot of people in Arlington don't know of the problem that has occurred over time. And uh, so I'm sure that when they find out, they'll be just as distressed as I am. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fiore. Um, Mr. Dosha. Gina, I, I, okay. No. Bob, how are you tonight? Bob is fine. Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. Uh, I didn't intend to come up, but as I was crossing the street, Town Hall, celebrating Town Hall Day, I cherish this place, the garden, and the library as much, if not more, than most people around here. I'm really proud of it. I remember my first days in the 40s, sitting up in the balcony, waiting to go to the dentist up in the far corner. And I don't know whether it was a f what the dentist was, a town dentist or a foresight dentist. It doesn't matter, but I remember sitting up there as a five-year-old. Anyhow, in crossing the street, I noticed no clock. It's a blank. It's all taken care of. Thank you. It's been, it's been repaired as we speak, Robert, but one had to take it down in order to repair it. Good, because I was just, I wasn't feeling good about the idea we're going to celebrate this and 
the blank up there. Good. And the other one is you're going to fix the railing out there that's loose on the steps. The one on the right side going down. To that. I, I handled, you just need I some stuff the in the hole. Someone else in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you. It's well done, and I appreciate it. Thank Look forward to seeing June, you there. Be there June 7th, and you can see it. Unveiled. I will be there. My unveiled. ticket number yeah. is? 78, okay, I'll be there. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else who wants to speak? Welcome. Thank you. Um, hi. I appreciate the opportunity to address you tonight. I'm also here to oppose the appointment of Joseph Tulamari to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the reason why this is so dear to me is the first town meeting I ever attended in this town after living here 13 years was the 40B meetings that he ran um, back in 2005 to 2006. And I remember how aghast I was at every time I walked out of that meeting about the way the meetings were run and the way the taxpayers were treated. Um, I could give you plenty of examples. I'm not going to waste your time now. But it was profound. And there was a group of us that had gone. One of the things that he had demanded at one point, he would not allow the taxpayers to speak, and he would only allow the developers to speak, was he told us that we had to put our comments in writing and submit them before the next meeting. And I actually found the letter that I submitted back from 2006. And yet when I got to the next meeting, I wasn't allowed to speak. And neither were many others. So there were many things that went on. Um, and I have been following what's been going on in Cambridge. I just recently, back at my seat, I ran off a letter from the Cambridge, um, City of Cambridge lawyers to his lawyers demanding $80,000 be paid back. Um, I brought copies of that for all of you. And I would just really appreciate if you would really look closely at this. His appointment ran up in October and um, he's been serving now for seven months. And I also found him, um, one of the problems in Cambridge was that he was running without a quorum. And I found the letter back from 2009, the advocate that he did the same thing here when Susan McShane retired and didn't notify the board. So um, I would just really appreciate you looking at it. And since I'm here, um, <laughs> one other thing. Regarding the Chinese store, uh, restaurant that's going in um, at the corner of Forest and Summer, I just want to express a, a lot of the about his, um, concerns regarding the liquor license to 1130, where a lot of the places downtown are not open to 1130. I was just at um, Not Your Average Joe's the other night, and they were closing at 1030. Um, there's no parking there for 50 cars. And I know there have been a request made to pave the back parking lot, which I'm concerned that we that's an old swamp. And if it gets paved and there's no way for the ground to absorb water, it's going to go into other people's property. So if you could please just be aware of that, too. And I thank you all for your help. Hi, Joe. Oh, excuse me. Suck my curl. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you. I will leave copies with everything I brought with thank Mrs. You. Kropelka. Mrs. And if I could leave it to Mrs. Kropelka, I'm just going by memory, and I'm not saying this is correct because I've have so many things in my head like everybody else uh, but I believe on the 1130 liquor license or staying open to 1130 that when the proponent was here I questioned him about that and he indicated an earlier time to close yeah, yeah. I, I want to say it was 10 or 1030 but yeah, why don't we let mrs. Kropelka um, check that and then maybe um, we'd really appreciate it Larry yeah. if you can I know I remember quite I remember the I think board. it was later takeout yeah. It was later take out, but earlier in terms of the restaurant and the right. alcohol license. So maybe if, like Friday, if you could call this Mrs. Kropelka and we can clarify that. And then Mrs. Kropelka can send us an email indicating mm -hmm. if my memory is correct or not. I think you're right. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Is there anyone else here for a Citizens Open Forum? Thank you. Thank you. It's a popular night. Hmm. Well, you guys did it. <laughs> uh, How can we help you tonight? You know, I, I, I appear here when there's something in the mill that has to do with housing, zoning, and things like that. Uh, I was rather disturbed uh, when I got a phone call yesterday that there was an article in the Arlington Advocate talking about appointments to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I said, gee, how can that be? Because I looked at the selectman's agenda, and there is nothing on it about appointments to the Zoning Board of Appeals. 
So I assume that there won't be anything coming forth this evening? That is correct. Okay. I just wanted to be sure of that because otherwise I would see it as a violation of the open meeting law. So just at the last meeting, the board approved a process for choosing the, the next, for, and I, and it's on me to do the interviews of, for the people, and it is my, I, my goal is to do the interviews next week and um, put it on the agenda for our following meeting, which is, I believe, Monday, June 3rd. Wonderful. I can be here again on June 3rd. Thank you very much. If it's brief, you already got your crack, but if you, if you want to come on, come on up and... Come on up and be be quick. Right. The TV. Oh, yeah. oh. No, there's one thing I just wanted to you add. You just didn't want you to hit your head on the TV. TV, the TV. You just missed it. Sorry. If anyone would, I would. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to add, um, in my role as chair of the Summer Street Neighborhood Association, the um, approval of the Sims and the Brigham's unit combined is leading us to over 400 housing units in less than a quarter of a mile in our neighborhood, which is really a, a burden on us that we haven't even begun to overcome. I mean to address so thank you thank you anyone else here who wish to speak under citizens open forum hearing none we will now move on to traffic rules and orders we have an exciting night planned with the tra with the <laughs> transportation <laughs> advisory committee uh, so we've got just so we're, just a quick preview we've got three items we've got vo two votes uh, Mass Ave, Mill Street, Jason Street and we've got stop sign control Lachlan and Wildwood and we've got a discussion for the parking study uh, Jeff, are you up first? Is that or you? Who else would you like to come on up and come on up? Okay. Uh, generally, if you put it next to the town manager uh, or, or up the on the chalkboard behind. Well, him. they've got they brought their own easel. I don't know. Yeah. You put it right beside you, uh, Jeff. Yeah, that's good. okay. Oh yeah, that's good. Right. So just put it on the easel facing us, right beside you. But that way, the TV can also pick it up. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, let's do that. So you go behind the mic. How's that? Awesome. Is that Looks good? good? Is that good? Okay. Everyone can see it happening? Yeah. Yes. Good. You're probably all familiar with this intersection. Um, We've seen it once or twice. Probably been through it once or twice. So this intersection has been on our radar for, uh, for quite some time. Um, as you know, there's issues uh, crossing this intersection. The, uh, the approaches of Mill and Jason are offset, uh, which create crossing patterns which are dangerous at the intersection. Uh, the intersection experiences between seven and eight accidents a year on average over the last several years. It's been historically the third highest accident location in town. It gets uh, moderately heavy traffic volumes, over 2,000 vehicles in the morning and afternoon peak hours. Uh, operates at deficient conditions a lot of times, uh, level service E and F in the morning and afternoon peak hours. Uh, there's queuing involved on all approaches at some time. Sometimes uh, some are worse than others. Um, and also the, uh, the pedestrian phase of 21 seconds is deficient. It doesn't meet current standards. We actually need 29 seconds. So that's, that's something that has to be addressed anyways uh, going forward. So as part of the CBS project, um, we recognize this and we're able to obtain um, what we call mitigation um, funding for improvement of this intersection. Uh, $50,000 and the TAC formed a working group to look at possible solutions and we evaluated uh, alternatives uh, to improving this intersection both for uh, motorists, uh, pedestrian, bicycles, all, all modes and uh, we, we came up with, with some recommendations. I think we looked at four or five alternatives and a couple sub options but we came up with a, a list of um, improvements we think is the best combination of uh, mobility and safety improvements for this intersection. I'll just uh, briefly go through those. It was in the, uh, the, the report that we submitted. Uh, modify Mill Street southbound to have an exclusive left turn lane and shared uh, through right lane. So there's two, two approach lanes today. They're not designated. Oftentimes the left turners um, line up in that, um, that outside, uh, inside lane. Sometimes they don't, um, but there's confusion doing that. On the opposite side, on Jason, to designate an exclusive right turn lane and a shared left through lane for those, those approaches. Um, add a new signal controller. The signal controller is ancient now. Um, it can't process um, any type of phasing improvements that we'd be looking at, so we'd upgrade that signal controller controls uh, the timings uh, of the intersection. Uh, provide um, current, uh, sorry, 
with the control or split phasing for um, Jason and Mill Street. Today, those phases run together. So the vehicles often have a conflict and it's unclear which vehicles are going through and turning um, because there are no lane designations. And that's where we find most of our accidents occurring, angle accidents uh, coming across the intersection. So the best, um, the best separation uh, that we saw is to provide split phasing where e each approach goes on its own phase with no conflict. So that's, that's pretty typical uh, engineering practice where you have offset intersections like that where the ge geometry is, is not aligned for safety reasons. So we would add the additional phase. Um, they run, together, they run together now, but we split those. But the, instead of running an exclusive pedestrian phase, we're suggesting running concurrent PEDs where they run with the traffic. So in that case, we would not be adding a new, a new phase. It would be just trading one for another. As part of that concurrent PED phase, we'd like to run um, a three-second advance for pedestrians. It's something that's being done more and more. It's been done in Cambridge quite a bit over the last 10 years. Uh, we check with the city of Cambridge traffic engineer um, about that operation. We're pretty confident that that's, um, that's a good approach. So it'll allow the pedestrians to step off the curb three seconds before the vehicles. It allows the vehicles to see the pedestrian in the walkway, know they have control of that intersection, and they continue, continue to pass through on the intersection. Uh, provide pedestrian countdown timers and audible alerts, something that can be uh, updated. It should be updated um, right now. Slightly reduce the width of Jason Street Island. Um, this island is, if you, uh, you're probably driving through there, you know, it's slightly bent and uh, we call it, you have a lane and a prayer, you know, to get through there on that approach. There's, there's not wide enough, One, you, know, you can barely get, you know, two small vehicles maybe through there. But if we can shave about a foot or foot and a half off of that, we can at least queue up, you know, two or three vehicles. Um, you know, for the uh, left through lane and the right turn lane in that approach and get a little more capacity. But we don't want to eliminate the island. We think it's, a, it's a nice for pedestrian refuge as well as the aesthetics of the island. So we like to keep it. So we think we can actually shave it and reform it a little bit, uh, but keep the island, but get a little more capacity and traffic. And then provide um, a yellow green arrow in the uh, eastbound direction. Now you have a green arrow and it just shuts off today. So the, the vehicle's turning left don't um, you know? Don't don't know, uh, and vehicle, westbound vehicles don't know when that's happening. So, at least if you have the yellow arrow, you know, hey, we have caution. It's yellow. Proceed. It's shutting off. The westbound is going to be coming towards us in three or four seconds. So it's a, it's a safety issue. So, you're really providing just just one one new arrow for that east eastbound approach. It's already there, but it would change from green green to yellow. And those are essentially our our recommendations. Mrs. Mohan. Um, I don't know if you spoke to eight, and then I have questions about coordinating. I did, I did, not, uh, I did not speak to eight. Um, and I, I had a question on that. My question would be, when yep. you're talking about number eight, I'll let you explain it. Um, I'm wondering, is this a vote of the Board of Selectmen to ask the uh, Arlington Police Department, the Parking Subcommittee, to look at that in signage? But if you could speak to eight, and then I have some questions. Yeah, eight, uh, there's uh, on-street parking allowed um, in front of uh, the sporting goods store. If there's a vehicle parked there, it really reduces the amount available queuing for vehicles. It doesn't sound like a problem, but if you have one, one vehicle there, it could, it could really mess things up. We know um, in the sporting goods store, uh, people use that space, but in the morning peak hour, really the, the issue is the morning peak hour. We're, we're thinking, can we, really per, you know, can we prohibit parking at least for the, the peak hour to, uh, you know, to 9 a.m. or so? And so to keep, keep that clear. So it could be a, you know, a, a measure of enforcement. So we've had discussions back and forth on the TAC and uh, we wanted to get the recommendations um, in, in place and you know, address this, but ide ideally we would not like to see a, a car park there during so the peak hour. You Ms. Mahan, you wanna keep, yeah, keep going? So maybe after you get one through seven in, you'll come back with, along with, I know Corey Rateau from the Arlington Police Department sits on the committee, right. you'll come back with a no parking seven to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday or whatever. So, so number eight is a work in progress. Uh, correct. Okay. Correct. So right. did you want to speak? I have questions just, on other No, just, right, just to number eight. Yes. Why don't we make it no parking? Why are we, you know, I'm just wondering, it's one space. Why don't we just take it away? The sporting goods store is closing. I don't know what's going in. It's more than one. 
Huh? Two, two, two spaces, we're told. Two. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not familiar enough with the story. Is it, what time does the store even open? It's actually closed. Yeah, it's when, that, yeah. Yeah. when it was open, was it even open at those hours? Um, it would open at like 9.30. Because I see the auto parts park cars parked there. My, because, I mean, I, I may have done right. this morning commute once or twice. And, uh, yeah, I see an auto parts car yes. more often than, that, than anything else there. Um, so would you be opposed if we jumped the gun on you there? Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to it as long, right. as, as, long as you're as long as you're comfortable uh, with, with the business the aspects of the no yeah, parking. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit further I'm sure. But okay. Yeah. So are you maybe making a motion to put a no parking? Well we don't have any motions yet let's okay. I, I'm All inclined right. to say let's um, keep going fine. with the questions okay, so we're gonna, now. And then the my other questions center around uh, some emails from Gene Benson and right. Peter Fuller that this board has received. Right. Um, you have provided, and we have on our desk tonight, an answer to that. But since I know that they asked the questions and um, are waiting at home, um, with uh, Gene Benson, um, it, I was wondering if you could, I'm trying to go through this here. Basically, he's talking about item number three, um, the signal phasing and possible backups on Mill Street, and yeah. then item seven regarding the green, yellow arrow for lefts on Mass Ave. Jason to Mass Ave, and right. I know you talked about vehicles split queues, but if you could, um, you d you did provide a response, um, basically about split face vehicle queues and about not running the westbound lane, westbound left turn from Mass on to Jason. Right, right. Could you speak to those. Yeah, it's so, so with. Um, I think he was asking, can there be a um, first of all a left turn lane on on Jason Street? There, there really can't be. There's, there's not enough room to provide two, two full lanes there. It's really just, just, just one lane in that direction. We can provide a little extra by shaving that island, just for a little storage, really. But we can't do two, two official lanes. So for that, that reason, we can't run two left, two left turns at the, at the same, at the same, you know, same phase. So um, that's the answer to that, unfortunately. Um, the second one was, can you? Um, provide a left, a westbound left turn on Mass Ave to Jason Street. At the same time. At the as same time as eastbound. You can't do that unless you um, change um, one through lane to a, a left turn lane, really in both directions. So you're going to be losing the capacity of that through. It'd have to be left turn all the time, you know, 24 hours a day. We really need the, the two through lanes to, um, to accommodate uh, that, that traffic volume. Um, the only other way that if you wanted to keep the, the two through lanes is eliminate parking. So if you want to, if you look to eliminate parking on Mass Ave, you can maneuver around, you know, we, we didn't look at that as a, as a viable option. Um, because we really we thought the major issue was Jason and Mill, the, the, the crossing. Um, yeah, sometimes it's uh, difficult, but not particularly unsafe to make that, that westbound left turn. And the volumes aren't. Um, in the morning, they're about 100, a little over 100. Been the PM peak hour, less than 50 vehicles. So it's it's not a, it's not a huge movement in the PM peak hour where you have the most volumes. Um, so I, I think it's a good comment. Yes. But I, I don't think that's the, that's the the best solution um, to do that. I think there's too many impacts. There's other impacts I wouldn't get into with additional safety issues um, uh, with providing a provide a lag phase which would come later so I'm not even going to get into that and, and then Peter Fuller's comments on two and six which are basically he's saying seems like a good idea but I don't think you're going to have enough room to have two lanes there with the island you already addressed that then. right right you can't have you can't you're have two full really lanes two tractor trailers through yeah but, okay I, yeah right. thank you okay you're welcome. really can uh, fifty thousand dollars pay for one through seven Yes. Um, yeah, we, we uh, that we amend the traffic rules and orders for steps one through seven and refer eight to the parking subcommittee. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Further comment? Yeah, I actually okay. have a right. question. Um, with where it talks about um, requiring 29 seconds of crossing time now, and it was uh, out of date beforehand. Right. Do you think that's an issue throughout town, or is that? you know kind of just on this one mm, intersection no case by case basis it's an issue um the the manual on a uh, traffic uh, uniform traffic codes has, has changed in the last few years um to make it more time for pedestrians to cross 
So as we're upgrading intersections, we're, we're addressing that. It'll be addressed at, at, at all intersections eventually. Um, but it's something you know, we, we, note, we noted here um, that will have to be changed. Awesome. No, I was just curious about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Um, and thanks for the work on this. Sure. Uh, this has been a, a, a tough one. Um, in, in the report, um, you list out the existing conditions and no build and then four different build scenarios. Um, and you, you come to the conclusion that build scenario four, which gives a, a, a level of service of E, um, both the AM and the P, PM is, is the preferred option. Right. Um, there was one option that had actually a better level of service that you, you said in here that it, although it shows the lowest overall delay, it was eliminated because of safety concerns. Right. The combination of mill and Jason streets running together along with concurrent pedestrian crossings would reduce pedestrian safety. Could you expand on that a little yep. bit? Yep, yep. So you'd run the same uh, signal pattern as today. Jason and mill run at the same time, same conflicts except that the pedestrians would run concurrent so that the pedestrians would go at the same time as both of those phases at the same time. Yeah. So if you just wanted to focus on traffic, yeah. forget about safety, both pedestrians and vehicles, you could say, okay, that's one extreme. It's not the extreme we, we would recommend or we, you know, we did not recommend. Okay. So <laughs> it, would, yeah. it actually, it, it would be less, less safe than it is today. The way I was thinking about it, because I had, I had the exact same question, Mr. Kira, and I actually only figured it out when he, when he was talking earlier. And I was thinking about it, because when I'm doing, I'm say I'm coming up from Mill Street and I'm making the left towards Town Hall, and I'm sitting there watching that oncoming traffic, watching that oncoming traffic, and I'm waiting for the hole so that I can dart through and go on Mass <laughs> Ave. And then if you put a pedestrian there, you know, I'm going to miss them, but you know, we don't want that. To be, it's going to be interesting. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. for that, I, yeah, I came to that conclusion too. Yeah, I was just kind of te testing what would that look like. Um, yeah, great for cars, but you know, bad, bad for everybody else. So, Do we have any further questions? On, we have a motion for from Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, to approve um, items one through seven and uh, to refer number eight to the parking subcommittee. And Mr. Greeley asked the fifty thousand dollars. It's it's actually forty two thousand eight thousand of the fifty was used to put in a, a preemption signal for emergency services. So that's already at the intersection. So one through seven is approximately forty two thousand dollars. Thank you. Actually, that, I had meant to ask about that. And I forgot. Uh, so when an emergency vehicle is approaching, it goes green for them so that that can clear through. That's not coordinated with mill and summer, right? But the same preemption we've installed there at the same money, so it would clear out one and then the other, theoretically? Yeah, they're not, they're not coordinated. They're not, but, not connected in that respect. But the emergency vehicle would essentially get them coordinated by moving through them and triggering both? Is that? If they're in that, moving that direction. If they're, yeah, okay. yeah, that's right. Mr. Kiro. Uh, I think the only other thing I want to say is that I, I'm fine. I'll vote for the motion. I just, I hope that we'll be able to act on that parking recommendation you know maybe at one of our upcoming meetings this, this summer because it seems to me that now is the time probably to make the change before a new tenant goes into that location so there are no false expectations that are uh, that are set up that's yeah. point your parking you. subcommittee is usually pretty prompt so I'm what's that sure. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> the members of the parking subcommittee have been informed right mrs corralga <laughs> yeah. yeah all right any further discussion all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That opposed? Five zero unanimous vote. Thank you. Great. Thank you Next very much. Next up, um, recommendations for the stop sign control on Lachlan Avenue at Wildwood Ave and Hill Road. Good evening. Good evening. My name's Howard Muse. I'm co chair of the TAC. And uh, we had a request to look at the stop sign or the condition of the stop signs at basically two locations that are adjacent to each other uh, on Wildwood Avenue uh, at Lockland and um, Field Road. Uh, Field Road separates from Lockland just south of Mass Ave. Um, and so they both cross um, Wildwood very close together. There are already stop signs on three of the approaches, uh, the intersection of Lockland and um, Wildwood. The fourth approach has no stop sign. And one of the approaches, uh, the, the um, eastbound approach, has a stop sign but no stop bar. 
And then the other intersection has no stop control at all. Uh, so we were trying to look at figuring out what is the best way to um, add additional stop control if it's needed. And we, although we didn't look at any collision data, we have been, uh, a number of near misses have been reported at the intersection. And um, in, in the materials we sent you, there are a couple of pictures of um, uh, when you're at the intersection, you can see that um, it's hard to see approaching cars that might be coming. All three streets appear to be relatively low volume, um, and the major street uh, appears to be Wildwood. So the, the logical place to put stop signs if we were going to would be on the field and Lachlan Street approaches. And as I mentioned, um, the, the volumes are not enough um, to warrant, uh, Jeff referred to the uh, Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, which provides criteria for installing stop signs. And from a volume standpoint, we don't actually meet it at this location. But one of the other um, criteria for installing it is a location where a restricted view exists that requires road users to stop in order to adequately observe conflicting traffic. Uh, on the through street or the highway. And I think that's the situation that we have here. And based on that information, uh, we've recommended that we install the fourth stop sign on Wildwood Ave westbound uh, and add uh, plaques on each of the stop signs that says it's an all-way stop or four-way stop. So basically everybody has to stop at this location or would have to. Uh, add a stop bar at the location that does not have one now. Uh, we believe that um, basically if we have stop signs all around, the stop bar helps indicate where people need to stop. It's usually right at the location of the stop sign. Mm -hmm. And then install stop signs and stop bars on both field road approaches to Wildwood Avenue. Uh, and so that's our recommendation uh, to the Board of Selectmen. Questions? Mr. Greeley. Uh, again, a very thorough job by TAC. To what degree would the cutting of the hedges on that island help this problem? Because I was there today. They're huge. <laughs> yeah. They're large bushes. They're large. Yeah. This They're moron right. came zooming past me. I, of course, cautious driver that I am, <laughs> had slowed down, but they, you really can't see on this island, so I wonder if we also I would think cutting, put that in here. Cutting them back would help, particularly for the south bound approach on Field Street. Um, and however, come in the other direction on Field, uh, it's very difficult to see to your left as you're heading towards Mass Ave because of, of the geometry of the intersection. There's a fence and uh, some other things there. Uh, so it Again, I think it would be a good idea to trim those bushes, uh, but I think also to continue, uh, we would stay with the recommendation to install the stop sign there also. So moved. Second, one question. One, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I got this question half a dozen times over the weekend and I called Corey Rateau and you mentioned it and it really seems basic and mundane, but when you say stop bars, can you explain to people that are watching what a stop bar, people are like, is this a bar? <laughs> Not that it's a going to get a Bud Light bar, right. <laughs> but if you, if you can say what that is. Yeah. It's a, a painted white line on the roadway that extends from the stop sign across the roadway to the middle of the roadway if it's a two-way street. And, and one of the other comments I got that I'll leave with TAC, because we give you a million and five things as well as the town manager, is I did get along with after two people who said what is a stop bar, the next question was, well, why don't we do that where every stop sign is? And I, I don't necessarily need an answer to that, but people, when they found out what that was, it, it sort of seemed the natural course of. And I understand we have all sorts of painting requests and things like that, but I got that question twice mm -hmm. after I explained what stop bars were, so I just wanted to pass that on. Um, because one person said, you know, if we can't go out and do it at every stop sign, is this something that the Transportation Advisory Committee or the town manager might want to think in the future whenever we're installing new stop signs, recommendations that to automatically include stop bars? 
And I'm going to leave that to the greater powers that be in terms of what that cost is and, and what we have for labor and how intensive yep. that is. So I just wanted to pass that along because I got it. And thank you for explaining what bar you were talking about. <laughs> Further comments, questions? No. Mr. Greeley, did your motion include any reference to Bush's? You know, it did not because our excellent town manager was writing notes as I said it, and I'm betting that he's making a call on this in the morning. He's writing something bad. <laughs> <laughs> Will they ever stop talking? All right. Was it something like, does this executive producer think he's special or something? <laughs> yeah. No. So, yes, I w we refer that to the town manager. Excellent. We have a motion from Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Muse, I think you're on again. We can no? start with uh, Laura. Excellent. Oh. So we are here to talk with you tonight about um, a parking study on, on, about the commercial area um, in, in Arlington Center we, is where we've started. Um, this ball sort of started getting rolling last spring when a uh, town meeting adopted a warrant article to look at, to investigate implementation of paid parking. However, there wasn't any um, funding with this, so we just sort of started it internally with TAC, which formed a working group that included Howard Muse, Officer Corey Retto, Scott Smith, um, Paul Kent, who represents the Chamber of Commerce on TAC, Marie Kropelka, representing the Selectman's Parking Committee, and myself. Uh, the group was formed to sketch out some of the goals and collect data on parking. The preliminary goals established were to improve the efficiency and management of parking in Arlington Center. Um, the TAC and planning and the planning department each came up with $2,000 so that we could collect data on um, occupancy of parking, both public and private, in, this, in the center. Um, so this year's town meeting allocated $30,000 in the capital budget for a parking study. and. Um, we were interested in, in discussing with you sort of the, the um, preliminary scope of that, of that plan, and, and we really welcome your input at this time. Whatever recommendations come out of the study, we'll come back to you to discuss and implement as you see fit. Um, I'll now turn it over to Howard, who oversaw the collection of the data and uh, the recommendations. Thank you. Uh, I noticed that um, in the copy of the memo that I got, it didn't have a figure that was referenced, so I brought some copies for you. Oh, thank you. Might make it a little easier to follow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love these color-coded things. You and Clarissa, she loved colors. Good. Yeah, except I can't see it. You're colorblind, that's right. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, 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 no. I'll translate. I'll translate. That's right. I can follow it. Uh, the focus, as Laura said, was on uh, the Arlington Center. Uh, and you can see from the graphic the areas that we were covering in terms of the study, which includes Mass Ave between Academy Street and... Um, yeah. Good, Brian and Blank. It's the Frank other end. <laughs> Next one down from Medford. <laughs> I'm sorry. Franklin, Franklin thank you. Uh, I'm getting to that age where I forget things <laughs> more quickly than I used to. Uh, we also looked at Pleasant Street, uh, Swan Place, Medford Street, and the two parking lots at Russell Common and Railroad Lot and also the um, parking uh, right in the area of the fire station there. Uh, and in the chart that we showed you uh, or handed out to you, we identified the areas where uh, there's one hour, meter, um, one hour spaces on Mass Ave that are not metered, two hour spaces that are not metered. Uh, we listed the spaces in the parking lots as three hour metered when we did them when we did the counts they were two hour spaces but I think they have since been resigned to be three hour spaces uh, and then there are permit spaces in the Russell common lot and then the spaces 
uh, particularly along Pleasant Street, are unregulated. And uh, that constitutes basically the study area that we were looking at. Uh, and we came, identified what we called uh, um, some issues or I think questions that we think need to be pursued. Uh, one of them is that there's a mix of one hour and two hour spaces on Mass Ave. And I quite frankly did not realize that myself until we actually did this study. And you can see on the chart uh, or the map that I'm not sure there's any particular pattern to the way the one hour and two hour spaces are allocated. So one of the questions is, is whether or not they should all be two hour spaces. Uh, in terms of enforcement, the one hour spaces right now are difficult to enforce because the parking control officer doesn't go around frequently enough to catch it. But if that should ever happen, I think some people would be very surprised to get a parking ticket for being there more than one hour. Uh, a second question, and I think this is not a new question, is whether the on-street spaces should be metered to assure turnover and an adequate supply of spaces for customers going to the various businesses in the center. And we did collect some data that hopefully helps us to address that issue. Uh, the monthly permits in the Russell lot, um, uh, there, there are monthly permits available, uh, but a question comes up as whether there should be a mechanism for all day parkers who are infrequent parkers. Right now there's, there's no mechanism to do that if uh, you occasionally need to park there all day. And finally, there's a, the issue with the Russell and railroad lot meters, which tend to be very unreliable. Uh, they're difficult to use. If you've ever been out there in the middle of the day, they're hard to read if the sun is in the right place. Also, in order to use them, you have to stand in a drive aisle, which um, is not the best thing to be doing. And you have to be tall. And you, <laughs> that one I a didn't have to worry elderly, about. <laughs> I can't tell you. I'm just, I don't mean to, but you have to be tall. <laughs> So in that study area, we had a total of uh, 565 spaces. About 220 of them were on street spaces and the remainder, about 350, were in the public lots. So the bulk of the supply is in the lots. Um, there's a table on the third page of your handout that just shows we did two things when we uh, collected data for this. One is we did what's called a, an accumulation count. We just sent somebody around every hour and count the number of cars that are parked in each segment of the roadway or each part of the parking lot. So that over the course of the day, we could see how the lots fill up or how they empty out and when they're most busy. Uh, surprisingly enough, well, maybe not surprisingly enough, I was a little surprised that the peak utilization is at six o'clock at night, which I assume is when most folks are there for the restaurants and some other businesses. Uh, and in fact, in a couple of locations, you actually have more people parked in spaces by people being in, in Ill illegal spaces. Um, but even in the middle of the day, uh, we were getting uh, the on-street spaces were anywhere from 82 to 90, 97% occupied. So a lot of times um, for a retail area, you want to have lower utilization than that to have places for people to park when they get there, uh, basically to allow the turnover of um, spaces. The other thing we looked at was how long people were parked there. Uh, so, and we did this just for Mass Ave spaces. Uh, and uh, this was done by doing what we call a turnover count. Um, the counters went out and recorded the license plates record the last three digits, which is enough to be able to track how many hours a, park, a car is parked in a space. And um, one of the things that we found was the turnover in the one hour and two hour spaces was basically similar. And by turnover, we mean how many cars park in, how many cars park in the space over the course of the day and the number was close to five. And in terms of average time, in the one hour spaces, it was one and a half hours, and it was a little bit more than that in the two hour spaces. So for the most part, the one hour and two hour spaces are operating the same way. So the distinction between them, I think, is not recognized by most. 
There were not a lot of cars parking more than the allotted time, but there were some, uh, including some that were as much as um, five or six hours in a space. And to the extent that they're there, that's one less space available for somebody who needs to run an errand or uh, shop or uh, whatever in the, in the center. So we developed a, we have very good base information, I think, that we collected in this. And we're suggesting that the, the $30,000 allocated for the study be used to hire a consultant um, to address some of these issues in a little more detail, probably reaffirm or do an additional count just to um, verify what we found in the information that we collected. And the study would help identify the existing usage patterns, and again, I think that's something we have a lot of information on. Revenues and costs to maintain the parking supply, potential measures to make it more efficient for employees, um, long-term parking for employees, convenient parking for customers, alternatives for pricing, including free parking, which we have now on um, Mass Ave. Uh, and the revenues and costs associated with various pricing mechanisms, time limits, uh, how much time should be allocated in various places, and then based on whatever recommendations might come out of that, then look at the best management um, for various pricing alternatives, type of equipment, location, enforcement, signage, those types of things. Also, we thought that there were two items that prior to the adoption of a parking plan, uh, the study may take a few months and it'll take a while to get a series of recommendations, um, that consideration be given to more immediate action to improve directional signage to the parking areas, especially Russell Common, and internal um, signage identifying the types of spaces and lo location of spaces. Um, I think. Uh, Russell Common Lot can be very confusing at times as to where the metered spaces are versus the permit spaces. And um, again, what I talked about earlier, uh, moving ahead with making all on-street spaces to our spaces on Mass Ave. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Caro. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this, is, this is such a timely issue. I mean, one of the things that I've been doing over the last few months is um, meeting once or twice a month with the new um, center merchants group. I know Ms. Ms. Wiener has met with, with them as well. Um, and although the group is established to try to promote the center commercial district, inevitably the subject turns to parking. And it turns to a lot of these longer term issues that you've you've outlined for this this um, for the proposed study and I, I think you've really hit it on the head when you talk about things like you know user-friendly long-term parking for for employees because we know that that the businesses in our center have different and sometimes conflicting needs for parking I mean they, they need to park their employees and they, they can't always afford to have their employees getting up in the middle of the day going out and, and uh, switching their car and um, at the risk of getting a ticket, especially if there's, you know, at times where there might be only one person on staff, um, but they need the turnover on the other hand for, for, you know, retail businesses need the turnover on the other hand to, um, to keep the customers coming um, and going. Um, you highlighted a few things that I've, I've heard uh, a lot. I mean, we've talked a lot here and, and elsewhere at town meeting also about um, signage and, and the meters and, and um, they, they're a disgrace. The meters are a disgrace um, in, in, in this town. And I, I know that we've kicked this around and we're gonna get there. I know we're gonna get there. Um, one thing I'm, I'm very glad of though is that you highlighted a couple of things that, that you're recommending happen prior to the parking plan um, and the parking study being, being uh, undertaken, uh, some immediate issues, and I really hope that we can take these up. I, I keep hearing about directional signage, and this isn't like the, the long debates. We had a town meeting about historical signage and, and marking landmarks. This is simply helping people to find the parking location 
whether it's the entrance to Russell Commons off of Medford Street that isn't very you know, easily marked or the entrances off of um, Mass Ave, folks who are, you've stated it yourself, most of the, most of the spaces are in the lots. Mm -hmm. Most of the spaces are in the lots, but a lot of people who are visiting our town don't necessarily know that those lots are there. I mean, if you go up to Moody Street in Waltham, you have no question in your mind when you go up Moody, Moody Street where you go to park, that the, the, the directional signage there for the parking lots is very clear and it, and it jumps out, it's very uniform all up and down the street. So I hope that we can, um, we can get there and we can take that up before the, the, the study is take it, taken up. Uh, but also the signage within the lots. And in your opening remarks, you even mentioned that you said, well, we looked at the three hour spots, but I think the signage was changed during it from two to three. Well, it isn't all changed. Actually, it's inconsistent. I believe the limit in Russell Commons, for example, is all three hours, but a lot of those signs say two. Another problem that we have is although, and I don't know if, if your study really draws it out, but you, you mentioned the permit spots, although those permit spots are really time-based. There are certain times when those are free and open to the, to the public. I believe after six in the evenings, it's free and open to the public, and that's not clear to a lot of um, visitors. Um, and patrons uh, to the, the businesses, it's not listed on the signage at all. So I, I hope that w we as a board and the manager, working with the manager, can really take this seriously and get some of these short-term issues addressed you know, relatively expeditiously while we, while we take up some of these others. And I hope then that once the consultant is uh, retained, we talked about this at a previous board meeting when we had a representative from the center merchants here, that um, the center merchants can be pulled into this discussion as well uh, with the consultant. I, I'm, I'm glad that we have representation from um, the, the, the Chamber of Commerce, but um, the, the center merchants really are very specifically focused, very heavily weighted towards the retail uses within the center. Um, and I think the chamber brings a, another aspect of the business community to that, but I think it's important to have those voices at the table when we have that. So I'm sorry, I don't usually like to just sit here and, and talk and, 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 and spout, but this is so timely. I, I just really appreciate the work. Thank you. Vern. Um, yeah, I echo everything that um, Shakiro just said. I agree, and the time ring is actually you know, ideal. It's nice that when town meeting ends one, you know, a week ago and then this comes right up the pike and I think we're very lucky to have you guys and girls doing this. Um, of course, is $30,000 about, a, you know, enough for a consultant to do a project like this and take this on? It, it certainly wouldn't be if they were doing a full study. Uh, we're hopeful that by having all the information that we've already collected, um, and we've analyzed it, and we could hand them all that information, that that's one of the expensive parts of a study is just getting all the existing conditions done. So um, we're hoping then that allows them to move on to addressing the policy issues and the various possibilities in terms of management and equipment and that sort of thing. Uh, it's it it'll be tight. <laughs> it's a start. Of course, yeah. yeah. And um, only other than that, I think uh, everyone from the board agrees that as long as this project is an end to the meters that we use in the center, I think it's a step in the right direction. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Thanks, Mr. Greeley. Yeah. Um, with all due respect to uh, my colleagues, we've been discussing this for 25 years. <laughs> Easily, you have. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying so. But it, this, is, this is some wonderful uh, data. So, uh, I just like to ask a couple of questions. So, if I had to ask you the question, is 565 spaces adequate? The answer would seem to be yes, based on all these utilizations 93 percent, 77, uh, 98, some of them close 64, 77 percent. 565 would seem to be sufficient. Typically what you find on any parking study is that when you take the total number of spaces and the total utilization, it's adequate. What happens is that certain key locations where everybody wants to park right. are very heavily utilized and then the more re remote locations aren't as heavily utilized. Right, and sometimes you can get around that by your pricing policy and, and, and there other management uh, uh, procedures or 
that, that can help you maybe reallocate the way people park. So a nine hour day, did you have people check every hour? How did you gather this Yes, we, we, we went from uh, eight o'clock in the morning till um, the last count was at seven in the evening. Uh, and some every of the, hour. every hour, yes. Okay. I'm just curious whether two things were tracked, and I don't know how you could, but were, was it tracked how many seemed to look for spaces but couldn't find one? In other words, how often were all the spaces filled so that, on the on street in particular? The second thing I was curious about is the one hour parking spaces, everybody deserved a ticket because they stayed in the one hour spaces one and a half. Did you count number of tickets on these cars? No. During this <laughs> No. And in, in talking with uh, Officer Rateau, uh, he said that it probably would be very unlikely for someone to get a ticket because of the length of time it takes his officers to make the circuit. The chalk thing, yeah. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. Ms. Mon? I actually have like eight or nine bullet points but I'm, I was peeking at what you wrote down. Four. Do you want to do four? Because you might take sure. some of mine. Certainly. I don't want to. <laughs> no, no, no. I feel like you know, I, 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 I'm kind of peeking over, yeah. and I think you I'll have some of my I'll start with number points. zero, because you know yes. I count from zero, right? <laughs> um, first off, the un unregulated spaces. Correct, those are truly, you can park all day? Yes. Those? Okay. And most of them were parked, had parkers there for five, six, or seven hours. Okay. So I think it's mostly people who work in the center. And, are parking that. there. Okay. Um, number, uh, my next item is uh, I will reemphasize that the meters are a real problem. And uh, one of the things that I want to be sure that everyone thinks about, and Laura, this probably falls on you as the town representative of the committee in a lot of ways, is uh, how the actual workflow of the management of the meters works. Because one of the things that we struggle with right now is that the the town, uh, the people who manage the meters, tend to work. You know, they've got a set of hours during the day where they where they where they're more likely to be working, and then where as they're not working they're during the holy cow. What's you? <laughs> Sorry. The air conditioner, which is blowing oh, is fiercely, is? just I blew know. the vent <laughs> okay. of the. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I didn't cuss. <laughs> yeah. uh, Your my thing. parents would kill me. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna put that on the checklist too, uh, yeah. Mr. Mann. <laughs> yeah, the filter is uh, clean. I study that. All right. Sorry because about because it's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, meter. Oh yeah. So the meter breaks at seven o'clock at night, for instance. The regular town staff is, you know, at home as they as they should be, and that means that we don't really get to it until the next day. And then we don't, and then say we need to call for a, we get, and then we need to get the outside vendor to come. He comes the next day, then he needs parts, and it comes three days later. And you've had a meter that was out of commission for eight days, and you know everyone is calling me, yep. um, and and well they should. So I just want us to really think about when we whatever choices we make for the new meters that they fit operationally with the town. And if the town should either change its operations to match the meters, or we should hire a vendor to manage that for us. Or we should, you know, do you, but I just want us to really carefully think through operationally how that'll work for the meters. Thank, thank you. Uh, I completely agree that um, early signage wins will be a good thing if we can do that. Uh, insofar as it's obvious to us that we need can put up blue P parking signs and you know it's going to make sense. I you know it's so whatever. It, I think doing some of that in advance of the finish as we can is a good thing. And my last comment is on the one hour and two hour question. Uh, uniformity for uniformity's sake isn't something that I would consider to be important. So if you think that uniformity makes sense for a very specific reason, but at the same time, I think that some of those one hours actually are there for the right reasons in terms of like what businesses they're in front of and, and things like that. It, but I just don't, I'm, I'm not prejudicing a conclusion, but I'm just gonna say you don't have to be uniform just to be uniform. Right. Okay, those are my. This is Mahan. Okay, piggybacking on the chairman's comments. Um, How many of yours did he knock out? If you don't mind my asking. <laughs> he touched on two. He touched on two. Seven. There was to go. no knocking out. <laughs> um, on the blue P parking signs, um, the, the parking subcommittee discussed that and was about to embark on that, but then we got, in my words, bogged down on Swan Place, on overnight parking, on all-day parking. 
Um, so if the parking subcommittee at a, its next meeting in concert with TAC, because um, we indicated that, that we did want to do that on totally agree with the meters in the lots, um, not to be joking about, you know, you have to be tall. Um, again, the parking subcommittee also discussed that and the treasurer's on it and Corey Rateau and a bunch of other people. Um, some sort of temporary fix, A, for the fact that you truly do have to be tall. I've been in there where you have to stand on the curb. And if you're elderly, especially, you can't with the solar glare. And then the other thing is, I don't know if TAC can give us any recommendations on this and or again, this was discussed at the parking subcommittee, but a lot of that got pushed back because of some town meeting warrant articles. Proper signage that, you know, when the meter's out, as, as other my colleagues have spoken to, you know, six o'clock at night, um, you, you know, you can park there, you don't have to, to use that. Then my comments to TAC directly, um, just because it would be helpful, and I had a conversation with the manager, I can't even remember when I spoke with you, Adam. Um, on the figure one Arlington Center parking regulations and you outline one hour, two hour, three hour, not metered. In the future as you go forth, if you could apply percentages to that and why am I asking for that on Pleasant Street, which is green and unregulated, just me eyeballing it, it looks like that's 20% of the parking spaces. I know there's been an individual who's been very, um, Vociferous, who's been speaking a lot about, you know, we could solve all the parking problems on Pleasant Street by eliminating the parking that's there. So in the future, if we could allocate um, all these different one hour, two hour, three hour, unregulated, et cetera, what the percentage of parking that encapsulates in terms of just the Arlington Center area. Uh, the other thing is I would anticipate and it's probably already in the works that the consultant along with TAC um, also is working with uh, the planning department and the master plan consultant because there are some things as I was reading this and you were talking that I would like this consultant to consider along with um, the board of selectmen has been meeting and or individually has not already met with the master plan consultant in terms of, of how we go forward. And one of the things that I don't know if it can be encompassed, but should be maybe taken into consideration and is on the master plan, which is a Jefferson Cutter turnaround shuttle bus service, um, something in that area. One, one of the things that we're talking about on tourism and economic development is how do we get tourists here? How do we increase business um, profits in, in, not profits, how do we increase the businesses that c contribute taxes so it's not just um, residential 96.4, 97.3, and one of it is getting the tourists here, we need a place to turn around, that's Jefferson Cutter, um, and then comes in the issue of shuttle. So um, if you could kind of keep that. The uh, other questions that I had were, um, when the consultant is looking at this, um, along with assigning percentages to, to the different types of parking in Arlington Center, if there could also be some sort of um, compilation or recitation of exactly, it's, it's a little bit willy-nilly because it's gone by, my opinion, you know, business-driven requests as, as well as others the 15 minute parking spaces, the, the um, not so much the taxi, um, and, and you spoke too about the three hours and, and my colleagues, at the two hours and, and everything else like that. And then I think that's it, let me see, straight out meters. And then somebody had said to me, um, and they cited Concord, New Hampshire, and I'm not saying this is a solution, and if you all think it's appropriate for the consultant to look at, but I have been up in Concord, New Hampshire as a court reporter, where, you know, when you look at that first map, one hour, two hour, three hour, unregulated, 15 minute, 30 minute, et cetera, Concord, New Hampshire has just a basic uh, kiosk that is every 15, 20 feet. There's no time regulation. It's just you gotta keep going out and buying that ticket. And you can only buy it for a max of, I'm not really sure, I think it's two hours each. So I don't know, I, I, I don't know what you can do with 30,000. I don't want to um, add to the bill, but it, that had been suggested to me at town meeting, and those were my comments. But I really would like the percentage of, 
the first thing that I said, the breakdown of, you know, unregulated Pleasant Street is 22% of the parking. I would love to see that kind of data. Mr. Greeley. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, second time. Did you actually point at me when you said, and if you're elderly? <laughs> <laughs> no. Can we go to the tape on <laughs> Is that instant replay? Ow! <laughs> <laughs> did I do that? Rightly so. I apologize. I, I, I still did. love you. I no, apologize. But, I, you know, again, what a wonderful, wonderful job you have done, how thorough you have done on this. You, do you remember when we, we, Diane must have been here, right? When we actually talked about building a parking garage at the Russell Commons, that is second floor to the parking garage, what a waste that would have been based on these based on this count at this point in time. Yeah, I guess Mr. Yeah. one thing I'd say, Mr. Greeley, is that I, the 93%, <laughs> I don't interpret that as there's room. Like, I interpret 93% as it's pretty, like, you're, you're driving around in circles looking for a parking right, space. Right, right, but look at parking lots, right? 69%. Oh, I see what you yeah. Right? In the, yeah. 88%, but I mean, not enough to build a second level to it, right? Yeah. But 88% of the library, you're right, but 88% of the library, you're looking for a spot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Who yeah. doesn't look for a spot yeah. in the library? And I'd only note that, you know, I've talked to a number of the businesses around town who have said that their business has been down this year. And so we have to layer that on as well, that we, we do want room to grow. And um, and, and so, uh, you know, that that is specifically something that I've, that I've heard. I mean, some as much as 20%. So... Um, so is it, um, but as, this was excuse me, but this was done in November, closer to the holiday season. Right. November fifteenth, November seventeenth. Right. Well, right. But in a down year. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. No, I didn't mean to cut off discussion. Uh, so I think it's appropriate for us to move receipt on this. So move, move. second. Second. Second, Mr. Grilly's motion. Mr. The Grilly's elderly motion one went second. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. Oh, aye. Uh, uh, we'll do five zero, and then I'll hang on a second. Hang on a second, Bob. Uh, Actually, well, I'll do that. So, Bob, I don't, we'll do the vote in a second. Bob, do you, it is in the public hearing, but you're one of our favorite people. How can we help you? Can I comment? Please, Please. Yeah. Briefly. briefly. Yes. I don't understand why we have to do a study. They've done a study. We know what the problem is, and it's a, and we're going to spend thirty thousand dollars to find out what they've told us already. Okay. Um, there are a couple of things going on in town. The enforcement is haphazard. It's all over the place. Down in the municipal parking lot, I can count in the morning anywhere from 20 to 40 cars in the metered spots that have permit stickers. And those metered spots were supposed to be for the commercial component of the town. It's, you know, not to, it's the AC kids. I've walked through there in the morning, and you see them all pulling in. and I'm saying, why aren't they in the other space? And they said, well, what are you going to do? Well, th that's part of it. And I've seen people struggle not knowing where they should be down there. They put the money in the thing, and they can't find a place, and then they don't think they belong. Anyhow, that, that's one of many different things. And I think it's about time this town has to grow up and put in some parking meters in the business districts. We see that in all the surrounding towns, and we're bigger than they are. And that's one way to manage it. This business of uh, marking the tires and then coming back two hours later, people are, and we don't enforce it. We have places where there is signage, one, two-hour parking up by the high school. They don't tag anything from um, Bartlett Ave north to the high school on the street. It's all day up there. Anyhow, it's a combination of enforcement, and I think they've hit everything they need to hit here. We don't. I don't see why. With, with all due respect, Mr. Radosha, I don't ag agree with you. I think that there are things that, is, that we can we st that are still unresolved. For instance, what do we replace the meters with? Okay. But Mr. Uh, Radosha, meters, I'll tell you. I, I, Waltham has a smart meter system and out so there. So does Concord, New Hampshire, and so does Davis Square. But we don't want to debate that right okay. now. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. No, I think we're uh, ready to move on. Uh, okay. That's it. Yes. Uh, I just um, opposed to spending money on this thing. They've done the job, and I think uh, with a little more help from somebody in town, we could probably come up with some answers. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Gosha. Okay. Uh, so while we have TAC here, one of the things that has uh, that came up at our last meeting, Mr. Greeley mentioned it, and then uh, Mrs. Mahan mentioned it to me afterwards, and I've been thinking about it, was as a board, we worry about whether, whether or not we use TAC too much. 
I mean, we've sat here tonight and you've given us three fantastic pieces of well-researched information that gave us the tools that we need to make smart decisions. And that is invaluable. And um, we thank you, we, we don't thank you enough, but we thank you for, for providing. And so one of the questions we have is, are we using you appropriately? Are there things that we can do that will make your lives easier, that we still get the, you know, the rewards that we enjoy from this excellent committee? So, yeah. What did we refer last meeting, remind me? It was uh, whether or not there was going to be a stop sign, uh, or no, no, school zone. Uh, where, how much signage around the school zone around, uh, um, which school was it? Um, oh, it was uh, the, the Gibbs. Gibbs. Yes, the Gibbs. Okay. But we yeah. also debated whether to send to TAC, and, um, and this ties into the parking in yes. the center, the, the, the region. Yes. Placement of the bus stop, oh, right. potential removal of a taxi so, stand. So uh, please, come on, do you want to come up to the mic and have the bus? Yeah. And can, uh, I, can I just add to that? Yeah. What we're looking for is, is there, my phrase, phraseology, is there a template that TAC can give us in terms of, you know, this is something that the Board of Selectmen, you know, you don't need to refer to us, or do you um, think we need to have a meeting of the minds at a certain interval that, or, or maybe have a meeting of the minds once? So our th go from there. Yeah. First of all, you, you can take all the residential parking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hello, one place. Thank you. <laughs> right, Mrs. We don't, we don't mind not doing that. Okay. Um, this is a different animal, the center, so that, that was a, a focus study. Um, I talked to Adam a little bit about this uh, today. Uh, we enjoy the work we do. Um, it's a dedicated group of volunteers uh, that we have, but we're volunteers and we can, you now we got some things off the plate tonight, so now we can get going a little Lake Street quarter, you know, had to be pushed back, uh, Jason Street neighborhood, and there's probably, you know, there's probably 10 other things, but those are some big ones. I think um, with regulatory regulations, like you mentioned, the school zone, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's actually a functioning, it's not a functioning school, so I, is it? I don't know why it's you would need. It's a school need. that we own. It's a, it's it's a property but, we own that but, has a school use. It's used as a school? Mm -hmm. Part of it. Correct. Okay. Um, and I think the TAC was formed for some of those questions, mm -hmm. with regulatory signage, because if you install it uh, and it's not properly installed, it's not enforceable, or you could even have liability issues with, with that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's, that's one use, the TAC. You should still use us for regulation signage. Um, mm -hmm. Not that, not, you know, if someone wants, uh, you know, no parking or 15 minutes, you, you, know, you could e easily do that. Um, but I think um, communication, um, if something comes up, I don't think we have to wait to get a letter from you to say, hey, can you, we should just get together and talk and say, is it best served by Board of Selectmen? Can you do this? Could TAC do this? What's, what's, what's the best uh, approach, you know, for doing that project? Large projects, sure, we're, we're involved in, the lake streets and mm -hmm. the intersection projects and so forth, but there's a lot of gray area with this, the, the you know the, the smaller ones. I mean, stop signs are regulatory, so you you're the regulatory authority. You could you could put it up without without asking TAC. Um, sometimes we've had issues uh, in the past where we put something up and take it down, mm -hmm. and that happens anyways with signage. Signage is is tough in a lot of places. Sometimes it gets installed in the wrong place. You have to go back. That's just the way it is, but. I think if we communicate more, you know, directly on issues, I think that that's always better. Okay. You know, I will certainly take that advice. Anybody wants to add to that? Or? Anyone else from the board thought? Keep it coming is what I just heard, so. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I will, I, I'll definitely work hard uh, to make sure that we manage the right flow. I know, for instance, we've got one that I haven't talked to yet coming up that maybe you read about some stop signs on Edge Hill Road. But on future ag agenda items, I will work harder to make sure that I talk to you about them beforehand before I bring them up before the board. And we'll work with the town manager, I'm sure, on that as yeah. well. Yeah, I think that'd be okay. effective. Yeah, great. Anything else? Happy? Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for all you. your Thank time you. and effort. Thanks a lot. Great work. All right. That did number four and number five. Next up is six. Mr. Kuro, Arlington Live. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, you have in your uh, packets a uh, memo that I uh, put together. I think I've discussed this at a, at a few of our previous meetings. I think that Ms. Um, 
Olszewski has also um, discussed this uh, when she's come before us to report on the uh, ATED uh, work. Um, <clears throat> the um, ATED uh, is uh, a lead sponsor for the uh, Arlington Live uh, Summer Arts uh, Block Party, uh, which is receiving uh, funding in part by the uh, Arlington uh, Cultural from the Arlington Cultural Council. Um, the committee is working also with the Arlington Center for the Arts, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Region Theater, um, a number of others to put this together. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that um, th think of this as a, as a larger but, but more discreet version of what our neighbors in Somerville are doing with their, their, their uh, I think, summer streets, they're calling it, where they're blocking off parts of the town for uh, summer festivals. We'll, um, we're looking to have a number of uh, musical performing groups from noon to 5 on uh, Saturday, um, July 13th, with a rain date of uh, Sunday, uh, July 14th. Um, the Arlington Center for the Arts is also helping us to recruit uh, artists and, and crafts uh, people uh, to, to set up in uh, tents. Uh, we are working on uh, pulling together um, uh, sponsorships for the event, um, as well as a, a few food booths with a preference towards Arlington vendors who maybe some aren't right in the center. I know there are some who have expressed interest in um, participating. To that end, um, <clears throat> I met last week with uh, Officer Rateau and uh, Lieutenant Conroy. They were very gracious. We walked through the site, uh, took a look at the Broadway uh, Plaza location as well as the location and um, of the street area that we would like to use for the um, the block party um, festival. Um, we're looking for permission from this board to uh, block off uh, Broadway from Mass Ave to Franklin Street uh, with the detail officer obviously at Franklin to allow the um, access to the central fire station as well as that small portion of Alton Street before the driveways. There's some driveways behind the dance studio and behind um, uh, right turn. Right turn is actually working with us as, as well um, uh, on this. What Woody is um, <clears throat> from uh, right turn. Um, it's not anticipated there'll be any blocking of sidewalks in front of businesses, uh, and the communication is going out to all the businesses to make sure that they're aware of this and the, and to invite them to actively participate if they so so uh, wish. But uh, we would be looking to set up a, a flatbed on. Uh, some of the parking spots for the musical performances use a small portion of uh, Broadway Plaza as well for um, a smaller performance uh, area during during set changes as well as some info booth. So I'm looking for the uh, permission from the board. I describe it all in the uh, memo of what we're uh, looking for, the hours we're looking for permission to uh, block off. Um, <clears throat> Officer Rateau, Lieutenant Conroy, indicated that we would need two detail officers uh, for this to control the entrance and access and that they would could assist with um, temporary relocation of the MBTA bus stop that would be impacted there as well. Um, in addition to this, <clears throat> I am asking for a wave because we're taking away some, isn't this, this is quite the timing on this agenda, because we're taking away some parking spots uh, temporarily on that day, we're asking for a, a waiver on the central, the Russell Commons parking lot fees that, uh, that afternoon during the festival uh, to accommodate visitors to the, um, to the festival itself. That sounded like a motion? That is a motion. Do I have a second? Second, second from question. Ms. Mahan. Um, Ms. Mahan. On that last point that you spoke to yes. with the Saturday events with, with the Sunday rain date, Yes. Um, are you asking for the waiver for the central parking fees, meaning the parking lot you just um, cited, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., or starting 8 a.m.? I was asking for 1 to 5. 1, 1 to, to 5, 5, which are the hours of the, of the festival. Um, I. I sh I just say because you cite a, a 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., then you cite a 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. are the hours of the events. We're looking for closure of the, of the road um, from, from 10 to 6 to allow for setup and breakdown. Um, there are some, the parking spots right next to the memorial on, on um, Broadway. I didn't take a precise count, but there's a small section of, 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 um, of spots. Uh, we're looking for that starting at 8 because we're bringing in a flatbed. That's so the main it's, stage. So it's, it's two waivers you're requesting. You're requesting at 8 a.m. on the parking spots closer to the central fire station? 
and right. then you're requesting 1 to 5 p.m. in the actual municipal parking lot on Saturday with a rain date of Sunday. I, I just want to make it clear so we let know, or, or if you want to think about it a little bit, you, you're, we have staging in one area and then we have parking. No, for okay, the I'm requesting permission for the road closures, the road, the road closure from of Broadway to Franklin, Mass Ave from Broadway to Franklin and Alton, Alton Street up to the, the, as described in the memo, up to the, um, the driveways behind that business block from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. with spots that are referenced here actually being having the enforcement, the, the closure go into effect for those parking spots starting at 8 that okay. day. So, so the initial that's, so that's, that's the first request. Let's okay. take that separately. So let's take that first. Okay. So staging starting at 8 a.m. and total closure starting at 10 a.m. at this area you referenced yes, by the correct. central fire station. Correct. So I'd, I'd second that motion. You want to do, you literally want separate motions? We can if it's easier. All right. Just so we let the police department. Uh, we, have a mo we have one motion about the closures. All those in favor. Excuse oh, sorry, Marie. Can I just say something, Joe? Yeah. My personal opinion is we should close it because we close it for town day because you're going to have people coming in yeah. to unload things and what have you in the parking lot municipal. It yeah. gets confusing of them taking some from 8 o'clock. So what we've done in the past for town day, the board has always allowed us to just not to take anyone during the center, during the festivities in the parking lot. It's much easier for them to know in advance that there's okay. going to be no fee for the whole day. Okay. And it's easy to get the message out to everybody. Okay. But that makes sense. You decide. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I, how does this differ from town day? I'm not clear. What, what is different about this than town day? What's different about the, this has, uh, this has a specifically arts angle. It's not, it's not um, a showcase of general merchants and uh, civic organizations or whatnot. Artists will be setting up booths. So, you know, visual or, or, or our hand artists will have, um, will display their And who's permitting that? Crafts. Who is, who gives a permit to who gets what booths and stuff? Um, the, the, we're working, well, ATED is the lead sponsor of the event. Arlington Center for the Arts, though, is, is handling the distribution of, of the booth spaces themselves. So they're, they're handling the applications for that, that piece. But it's a focused event around the arts. It's a focused event around the arts. Okay. Performing visual crafts. Yeah. And food. And there'll be six, like six booths. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As an amenity. That's it. So can I get a booth to display my artwork, for example? Of course. If you pay the fee, yeah. <laughs> I'll get you the work. schedule. <laughs> okay, so the first motion I is. I, I, I actually have one more Ms. question. Yeah. I know. Um, where the streets are blocking off, I'm trying to picture it. Is there any residential houses that will no. be impacted by it? No. Great. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion on road, the permit, specifically for the road closures? Correct. With the rain date of Sunday, of July. Sunday, 30. July. And yeah. we're making it Second. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., correct? Is that. Yes, so you that, should do that. that yes. If it's easier to just make it one it blanket, yeah. 8 a.m. To, yes. to 6 p.m. Yeah. closure, yeah. then yeah. we should yeah. just it's do that. It's easier for everybody now. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we're more, a little more in the weeds on these than we actually than we often are. But, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. so be it. Uh, That's fine. <laughs> exactly. You want to give me more, you give me more. Exactly. It's probably make it easier. Yeah. We have a motion on the road closures made by Mr. Kira, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Mr. Curie, do you have a second motion? I have a second motion. Um, I'm requesting uh, for the same hours that we just, just voted, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., that the, um, there be a waiver of the, the Russell Commons parking lot, lot fees, uh, an second. enforcement on that day. Is there any further discussion on the parking? Uh, no, but I have an unrelated question. Okay, let's do this. All those in favor of Mr. Curie's motion seconded by Mr. Greeley related to parking fees, please say aye. 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 Five zero, Mrs. Mahan. Um, the two parking, the two police detail officers. Who, who, who is paying for that? That's that's pay. There's a budget for the. Um, there's a budget for the event. So. Who's is budget? it a town budget? Is it a? The, no, it's sponsorship. Okay, uh, that's fine. It's sponsorship. Just like town day, it's not. It's town, it's, that's fine. it's cultural council money, sponsorships, booth fees. Okay, right. that's fine. Thank you. Mr. Kerr, did you have any additional motions? I did not. Anything else on this item? All right. Selectman Awards. Mr. Greeley. <clears throat> yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, the 
Um, we had a nominating committee that has made uh, 10 recommendations to us. Nine. Nine. 14 recommendations to us. Uh, and then there have been two additional recommendations added uh, by uh, one by myself and one by Mr. Kuro. And so what I would like to do is uh, move that uh, this slate uh, be approved. Uh, but before we do that, I just, we have one, two, three, four groups that have been nominated. And I wonder, does the board um, feel that's too many groups during one, you know, we only do this so once every five years. Can I just years. clarify? So we've got, on a, um, there's nine, nine yeses. No. I'm sorry, Mr. Greeley, mine has nine one, yeses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, but my, oh, I thought, I thought that meant they qualified under those areas. I, th no. And they didn't know where to place the others. No. Oh, I no, misunderstood. No, the other ones didn't. I didn't make it. Each one, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. It's nine. Like that's a no. No, I a understand. No. I understand. I see. So there's. Well, no why are they placed under the awards that way? That's what they were nominated. Okay. So you had like three nominated for the Diane Mahan Award, okay. but only one could get it. There is only one Diane. And <laughs> there is no Diane Mahan okay. Award. <laughs> so sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. Yeah. And then two two additional. Mm -hmm. So I move that we approve uh, the nine recommended from the committee and the two recommended by individual members of this board of selectmen. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Mrs. Mahan. Not to step on the third rail, but just to Mr. Grilly's point of um, the nomination of groups. Uh, Do you want me to split the vote? No, um, well, no, because in the nine, there's also a group nominated in there. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, what I would say is I would ask um, Mr. Greeley and or Mr. Greeley and whom, wh whoever is working on this to, um, from what I can see, the three groups that are nominated to sort of um, – set a parameter and a format in terms of I assume that we'll be giving something besides just saying you know here you go John Doe but if you have a group of 21 or a group of uh, 30 40 that you come up with some process in terms of it's one if it's one thing or you know I'm right. assuming something's going are you, you know are you concerned about the logistics uh, I'm concerned about giving awarding. 21 things to, like, oh. say, say group is 21 members. I'm just going to say that as yeah. a for instance. I'm sure that we can figure out a right. delegate. So I would ask you to. Yeah. yeah, let me, the, if you remember five years ago, we TAC, because of the kind of work they displayed here tonight, mm -hmm. were given an award, and I believe we just brought up two, the co-chairs, I believe, is how we made that award before. I no, I'll, I'll leave that to Mr. Greeley yeah. and others to, you know. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's all. All right, but, so we have a motion. In a second, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Mr. Greeley, really, do you have any comments on the awards, or do you want to save that for later? Well, should I now announce then who just won? No, you should say uh, when we're doing the award ceremony. Oh, uh, Marie, is it? Did we get that last Thursday? 20th or 27th. The 27th of June. June. Do we have Stay a tuned to the 27th of June to find out who won the <laughs> Selectman Awards. Okay. That's all right with me. All right, um, <sighs> Mr. Mr. Chaplin. Oh, no, no. Oh, sorry. We, can't, we have to let them know beforehand. You can let a few people know, but we don't have to say it right now. Right, but I mean, we'll have to send letters to these award winners, yeah. don't yes. you think? Okay, yeah. and we also have to figure out what should we give them as awards. Yep. Hmm. And that's remember, my point. Do you remember what we gave them before? I'm blanking. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to Mr. Hurd. We'll figure it out. What's that? A firm yeah. handshake. No, I think we should make them all get a tattoo of BOS award winner. Do you think? Wow. <laughs> Mr. Chapdelaine, <laughs> would you like to talk about the goal setting? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anything to shut up freely. That's all. <laughs> I'm going to call you elderly again if you keep it up. I didn't say that. Sorry. Right, so last week I mentioned that we would uh, pass out an agenda item. 
discuss setting a date for goal setting. Uh, we met last year on the Saturday morning in June for several hours and had our goal setting discussion. Um, I believe we met again. Uh, we met twice. We met again on Saturday morning. Okay. I don't know that we'll need to have two meetings again this year. I think you know, that was sort of the first time the commander and the board can be that it is. There's a lot of new people. Discussion. Yep. Um, so I, I was hoping we could set a date uh, for sometime in June or July, depending on uh, board's availability. Uh, we can talk about it Saturday morning, possibly an evening meeting outside of the normal routine, depending on what the practice of the board is. So my first inclination is to do a Saturday morning again. I don't know, how do people feel about that? I think I prefer that as you well. You prefer that? Yeah. Uh, if it can truly be a Saturday morning? Yep. I, th I, because, yep, I think we can do that. Uh, Saturday, <coughs> and I will say just because I know my schedule, and, and I've, I've got the 8th and 22nd available. So the 8th is the day after uh, the 100th, and the 20th, which really leads, which takes us to the 22nd. Is there anything that misses? <laughs> Not the 8th, I'm sorry. That is yeah. the day that we flip the mattresses at my home, and so I can't break that particular. I have um, <laughs> school. I have, I have a husband away, school, coaching, so cheerleading, car wash. I'm, I'm tied up until um, my first available Saturday in June. And it doesn't have to be dependent on me, is the 29th. It's the 29th. Which I apologize. And, and like I said, it, if everyone else can meet that that's fine and the only sad day in july that i'm not available is the 20th so somebody's in town on the 29th is rolling his eyes <laughs> yeah, why does it have to be a sad did we do a late afternoon too no we did two saturdays we did we did one night one saturday and one night we, we did a sad I'm morning. Sure one of them was an afternoon. We did a Saturday morning. It was June 23rd, our first one Saturday morning, and then we did one Thursday night. Yeah, it was. Over in why don't we Why don't we pick a Saturday that yeah. we can actually all make, so and let, then go see if we need a second. Can I? Can, yeah. Can people do? Does June 29th work for everybody else? No, no, no. Don't break up your plans for that. Uh, it's okay. No, you um, have plans on the 29th? Wait, wait. Yeah, why he's, why, he's why are town, we just we'll dismissing okay. Thursday? What's wrong with like Thursday, five to seven? We can do that. I mean, that, that Why are we just, I mean, all right. or is that a problem for you? Is that, for, um, it's a little early generally for me. Yeah, six to eight or yeah. I mean, better, even seven to nine. We're used to mean at seven. Why don't we do seven to nine? Which can we do 20 or 27? No, we can't wait. What, what's the thing is 27 at the, is the Selectman's Award. We can't mm -hmm. do that, right? That That's true. Good point. <laughs> um, we can practice on the 20th. I, I really I think that doing a Saturday morning has All right. has uh, has magical effects for yeah. being able to think about it, so, it does. I don't mind doing a Sunday Let's afternoon. Do I mention I have a tea time at seven a.m. every Saturday morning. Do you? I'll really? give one up. Do you? Uh, yeah, but I'll give one up. No, 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 no. Really, I'll give it up. I'm not worried about it. Really. Sure. I'm sure. Just pick the one that works for everybody else. Twenty hmm. ninth. And we'll do. Uh, do we want to do eight thirty to noon? Nine to noon. Eight thirty to ten thirty. Eight thirty to ten thirty. Why don't we say that? And okay. then if we have to go longer, is earlier better for you? Eight. Uh, eight yeah, yeah, I'd rather get it okay. if I could. All right, let's Just call it eight thirty to eleven. Ten thirty. Yeah, eleven. Okay. So eight thirty on the 29th? Right. Mr. Chaplain. That works. What I will do is, um, as part of the managed performance evaluation, right? And I think that's why we had a second meeting. We I did it. So. And yeah. then location? Managers are possible with the That's good. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. All right. Thank you all for your flexibility and the use of your time. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Correspondence received. Receipt. Elaine Crowder, Summer Street, Forest Street, Commercial Area. Peter Headland, sign requests. We, uh, do you want to, on the sign request, Mrs. Mahan, do you want to actually move the referral of that to TAC? So moved. We have a receipt and a motion to TAC. Is there a second? No, second. Second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 New business, Mrs. Kropelka. Nothing other than just a reminder that I hope you're all going to watch um, the two stars tomorrow night, Mr. Greeley and Mr. Curie. And 7.30 sharp. 7.30 sharp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Okay. Nothing new, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Greeley. Yes, well, uh, I wanted to also mention tomorrow night Town Hall in Character here at 7.30, and um, myself, it'll be the Robbins brothers, the Robbins sisters will be there, along with, who is Chuck portraying? Cyrus Dallin. Cyrus Dallin. Uh, be here. You're really going to miss it if you're not. Uh, and the other is, again, a reminder about the celebration, the centennial celebration of uh, Town Hall and Gardens on June 7th. Tickets can be purchased through Marie in the Selectman's <coughs> office, through any of the three leader banks in Arlington, or out line through Patsy Kramer. And Mr. Chairman, with your indulgence, I'd like to announce a fundraiser that's going to be held for two of the Boston Marathon victims, Patrick and Jessica Downs. Uh, both lost a leg, uh, husband and wife, and uh, Jessica, I believe, also lost a f the other foot. And so uh, the pear tree hair design on Sunday, June 2nd, from 9 to 345, <coughs> this is on Broadway in Arlington, pear tree hair design, will be holding a fundraiser, and they ask people to sign up to have their hair done that day. I, I had my hair cut there recently and look how beautiful I am, and, or not. And, uh, but all of the money goes to this Patrick and Jessica Downs. If you're interested, please call 781-646-0033. Again, 781-646-0033, Sunday, June 2nd, 9 to 345, at the Pear Tree Hair Design. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Ms. Mahal. Um, I have one, actually one item for new business that I believe the chairman's going to speak to, so I'm going to defer to that to the chairman. Uh, the other is um, surrounding DCR. We've had a couple of issues come up. One was the logistical or logistical uh, traffic nightmare uh, that we had. That traffic got uh, tied up on Route 60 in front of the police station. Asked the town manager. He spoke with Dan Hunt of DCR. Um, DCR had contacted the town and National Grid also had a detail out there um, that has since been resolved and I believe um, the town manager had a conversation that there would be better communication yeah. attempts to um, because we got quite a few and that also backed up traffic into Medford as well as the town manager and I along with Representative Garberly have spoken to Dan Hunt um, and or we'll be speaking to the commissioner or the governor even um, regarding um, final outcome on Sunnyside. We had a meeting back in July of last year about some uh, really low cost ticket items um, that hadn't been done. So I just wanted to um, inform the board that the town manager and I and others have been working on that. If I could, I've received quite a few, um, especially from town employees as well as residents of the town. Um, asked through the chairman to the town manager and I know it's been discussed on the list and there was an article written um, and I saw Jake up in the other night and told them I'd be talking to him about it on the Sims um, employee slash affordable housing the 26 units uh, originally there was talk that there might be preference to some um, employees who work in Arlington but can't afford to live in Arlington that units would be available but I think I'd like to get some clarity from the town manager and from um, Jake Upton and others regarding, I believe it's 26 units and I think it's just affordable housing. I don't know that there's still employee preference. There's not. But if you could, people are asking me, you know, when does that open up? Um, you know, because they're really m moving forward on that and they've already listed the townhouses and other things. If um, the board could be provided with, so when people contact us um, in terms of how they apply for that and when they should. Um, and then uh, the last thing with the exception of I'm going to leave it to the chairman for my fourth item of new business, which he'll, he'll probably call, cover, is um, I just want to highlight again, because we've been asked to, that the, the master plan, which is not 
the Mass Ave redesign, which a lot of people in Arlington seem to think, seem to confuse the two. Uh, the master plan sort of is, the, you know, the vision for the next 20 years. Um, the consultant and Carol Kowalski ha is and have been meeting with individual members of the board as well as other stakeholders. Um, there are meetings coming up. I can't remember when the next one is. I know it'll be on the town alert. I don't know if you know off the top of your head. Twenty. June okay. 1st, I um, it is. But really, really come to that. Um, and it just um, and and one of my colleagues might speak to that under their new business. That's it. Thanks. Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Just two things, real quick. Uh, Ms. Mahan, you just jo jogged my memory. Um, I think I mentioned this to, to the town manager. The state treasurer Grossman was in town a, uh, about a month ago. Um, when I was speaking to him, he mentioned that. Um, he has a program for municipal employees where they will do bulk searches for unclaimed property for the, the uh, employees, and he's willing to work with uh, cities and towns on that. So I just oh, wanted to mention great. that. That might be something to uh, look at. And I just wanted to l let you all know that um, getting ready for tomorrow evening, I brushed up my character acting skills this morning. Mr. Waller has pictures, I think, to prove it. Um, at the library, I did appear uh, before a rousing crowd of one and a half to two and a half year old children, only made one of them cry in my performance as Clifford. So, Mr. Grilly, I hope you will agree that the challenge which you laid down this past summer has been satisfied through this. No! <laughs> I saw it. It's on Facebook. I saw the picture too. <laughs> it's on Facebook. I posted. Right. I commented. It has been satisfied. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. All set? Yes. Um, I guess I'll follow up on Ms. Mahan's uh, comments. Uh, the Master Planning Committee meets the first Thursday of every month. Um, we switch it up. It was, we have a meeting in here. Um, we're going over to the Senior Center next month. Um, and we, they are having three or two or three different dates around town. I believe three, one down at Hardy School, one the high school, and another up the heights, the kind of like a follow-up to the big meeting we had, I guess it would have been about six months, a year ago, um, to kick it off. And uh, just kind of building off that, and it's really getting underway. I'm very happy with um, how it's going, and they're actually, um, for the committee, and I, I was invited as well. They're doing a um, little bus tour <coughs> around me. town, to kind of um, just kind of go out and see the sites and see uh, what we can build on. So um, it's going smoothly, and I'll uh, keep you up to date. Thank you. Uh, I had two items tonight. Um, both of them are headlined Minuteman. The first is that I was quoted in the Globe this weekend, and I wanted to clarify my comments because I don't think the context you know, came through the way that I would have uh, chosen if I was just talking to you all, uh, and, and anyone who's watching at home. First off, I'm very focused on what I perceive as the big picture, which is we have a school that needs a significant infrastructure investment, and we have a regional agreement that needs to be rewritten or modified in some way. And I'm, I spend, um, a lot of my time and attention on trying to work on, on those issues, and that's really the part that I'm th that I'm the most focused on. Uh, the question on who should lead Minutemen, whether it's Superintendent Boquillon or anyone else, is something that I think is best left to the Minuteman School Committee, and that is something that I said repeatedly to the reporter, but I'm not sure that it necessarily uh, came through that way. It's up to them, and I don't want to mess with that process, and I regret that anything that I said in my comments that made it sound like I wanted to get involved. So that was uh, Minuteman story number one. Minuteman number two is last week, uh, the town manager and I met with the chair of the Board of Selectmen of Belmont and their town administrator, David Kale, and uh, we, we had some very interesting conversations. I think that one, and one of the big upshots out of it was that we talked about how some of the sending towns, in particular the larger ones, could engage with the uh, Mass School Building Authority to try to impress upon them how important it is that they have a role in helping us keep this regional uh, region together and built appropriately. Uh, because, you know, we're trying to herd 16 cats, and uh, the state has to help us herd those cats 
or, or we're not going to get anywhere. So there's, I don't think there, there, you know, there are no formal decisions, but there's definitely, we agreed that we we're going to pursue a couple meetings with the school building authority with uh, probably inviting Lexington and others. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just want to uh, make the point, sir, that it is unfair to take one quote on from you and somehow think that you're divesting all of our uh, uh, efforts on this matter to Belmont or Carlisle or any other. You have uh, consistently been on top of this, consistently raised questions about it. I mean, for, for at least 20 years we've been fighting this agreement as to how fair is it that Arlington, which has the most number of students, go to the school, has the same vote and authority as a, as a town that sends one student to that school. Yeah. Three, or two, I guess. Well, it's number one. Yeah. But it's ridiculous, yeah. you know. So anyhow, you fought that continuously, and you were unfairly attacked by at least one letter I wrote from a concerned citizen. Yeah. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. Um, and, and thank you. That was the uh, piece of new business that I knew you would yep. articulate better than I did, as well as I know how it is to be uh, giving quotes, yep. and you don't get the choice of Absolutely. everything being included. And as you pointed out, the, the, the eyes on the prize, and I talked to Paul Schlickman about this today, is that we, you know, the only thing that I think this Board of Selectmen should be helping to champion through the chair, because you have, as Mr. Grilly has cited, spent an awful lot of time um, working with the Minutemen, administration as well as school committee is getting that school renovated it really needs to and and any concerns that people have um paul schlickman said to me today um the msba involvement oversight uh in terms of the thompson school project and all the al other elementary schools is really focused and highlighted um so th there's no way we can stumble on on anything like that and the only other thing uh th that that i would add to that is a any politician would love to write the story that appears in the of press course. and and we don't get to do that and be um we did receive a request from an individual to forward a uh copy of their correspondence that was sent to others um to minuteman's uh school committee representative and i think that's the appropriate avenue for that to go thank you that's a good point and uh the, the arlington representative is uh, laura morissette she's appointed by the moderator and I know that she welcomes, you know, conversations about Minuteman. She, I think, she represents. So if you could oversee well that as, as as you have, because you've been our designee I'll, I'll as finance committee, town meeting <laughs> member, and now chairman. All right. If are you are done. I, I am. Move to adjourn. One more. Oh no! Oh sorry. Oh no! But it's, this is a very very sorry. important announcement, <laughs> at least for some of us up on the on the board. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, the next meeting is our first meeting after Memorial Day. <laughs> more relaxed dress style. Oh. We reconvene on June. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Mrs. Mahan, do you have a motion? Move to adjourn. All those in favor? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Should that also, that June meeting, be our alternative transportation night? We could do that. Because we're, we can be in formal dress, and I have my spandex ready. I will ride my bike down here. <laughs> Boy, they. But they can't see it. And does it also mean we can wear white shoes? Yes, <laughs> yes, you can. Um, or would you rather save it for July? I'd or? rather save it for July, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Thank all right, you. done. All right. So move to adjourn. All we'll those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.